The Greek alphabet is already well represented in the field of wealth management. A lot of investors are already familiar with the concept of beta, which is a measure of the systematic or market-related risk incurred by a portfolio, and with alpha, which is the value that can, that can be added through picking the right investments. Now, Morningstar researchers have taken it a step further. I'm here with Dr. Paul Kaplan, Morningstar Canada's Director of Research, who, with a colleague, David Blanchett, from our Chicago head office, recently introduced a new concept called gamma. Now, Paul, why don't you start by explaining uh, what exactly this new measure is? Uh, sure. So let me start off with, you know, the name, alpha, beta, gamma. As you mentioned, the Greek alphabet already, we, we use beta to mean systematic risk. And, you know, a lot of, we spend a lot of time controlling that through asset allocation, finding the right mix of stocks and bonds and other asset classes uh, to suit the, uh, the risk tolerance of the investor. And then also alpha, which is the idea that there are superior managers out there who can outperform the, uh, their own, the asset class that they play in. So, you know, an active equity manager is expected to produce alpha over an appropriately chosen equity benchmark. Now, you know, both of those things are, are concepts or things that the investor and the advisor, you know, ultimately cannot control. Because let's start with beta. For example, the, uh, the, the advisor and the investor can come up with a perfectly suitable asset allocation that's just right for the investor, but then you know, the market crashes and the, and the equity portion you know, goes down by, by a large amount. Can't control that. Uh, alpha uh, uh, is even more difficult because in alpha, we have to actually go out and find superior managers, which is you know, a fairly difficult exercise to do. We, we expend a lot of effort doing that here at Morningstar, but nevertheless, no guarantee that a manager that, that we believe to be superior will necessarily consistently out, outperform their benchmark. So the question is, what is it that we can control? What is it that we can actually do that we know pretty much for sure will, will lead to better uh, long-term outcomes? And that's what we use the third letter of the Greek alphabet for, gamma. It's those things that through financial planning, we can, we can actually pretty much count on, on a better outcome than had we, had we not done good financial planning. Now, you, you and David Blanchett, who is uh, head of retirement research for our Morningstar uh, Investment Management Division, wrote a paper on this a few months ago. And in this paper, you outlined five factors that can be sources of gamma. Why don't you tell us what those are? Yes. And first of all, I'll start off by saying that doesn't mean there are only five. It just means there are five we focused on in this paper. Uh, the first one is what we call total wealth asset allocation, and that basically means taking into account your human capital and other factors in, so moving your asset allocation over time uh, to consider the whole portfolio. The second one we call dynamic withdrawal strategy, and that means instead of fixing the amount you're going to spend every year, let that vary uh, year by year depending upon conditions of the market and other factors. The third one is annuity allocation. The idea here is to, to guarantee yourself some additional income uh, year in, year out by using uh, fixed payout annuities. And the, the fourth one is what we call asset location and withdrawal sourcing. And here the idea is to take full advantage of your tax deferred savings vehicles such as RRSPs and to, to kind of really you know, get the most out of them. Uh, you know, by investing in them when you're, uh, before you retired and then when you retired, uh, you know, withdrawing them later rather than sooner. And the liability relative optimization, and here the concept is that, uh, you know, as, when you retire, you're going to face a liability. That is, you know, the, the, the money you need to spend to fund your retirement. That is going to vary with inflation, and therefore, you know, when you're doing your asset mix, you want to uh, pick those asset classes that are more inflation sensitive. And how much value can investors hope to add by making the right decisions in these areas? Yes, and this is what largely what the paper is about, which is to try to put some sort of quantification on this so that to help the discussion between in advisors and investors. And the numbers we came up with in our model is that as far as in terms of, of income, we come up with a number that we would say is the equivalent to adding 20 to 30 percent of annual retirement income. Now I say the equivalent because I don't mean literally you're going to get add 20 to 30 percent, but I mean in, in terms of 
of you know, how you economically feel about you know the the additions you can get, uh, it's it's sort of like getting that additional twenty to thirty percent. And then we looked at it another way, which is because there is so much focus on alpha in the industry, we asked the question: to get that additional twenty to thirty percent in retirement income, how much alpha would you have to get through active management? And that's like one hundred and fifty, two hundred basis point range, which even for excellent managers is still a very tall order. Thank you very much, Paul. And for more information on the study we just discussed, please click on the link right below the video player. And please note that Paul's colleague, David Blanchett, will be speaking on this topic at the Morningstar Investment Conference in Toronto on June 5th.